It's long. This video is about a young lady by the name of Lauren Smith Field. She was 23 years old when she died on December the 12th of 2021 after hooking up with someone she met on Bumble by the name of Matthew LaFontaine. The problem with this whole entire story is the fact that the police really did a piss poor job on collecting evidence and collecting any type of DNA from this man. This young lady was found with an enormous amount of alcohol, fentanyl, and some other type of drugs that would be consistent with date rape drugs. Matthew LaFontaine has not been charged with any type of crime at this time. This is bad. We're going to go over the police report. We're going to go over uh, the fact that she asked him for $40 to do her nails and to bring a bottle of tequila. And we're going to talk about you young women going out there on the internet, meeting these men, having them to come over to your home, or you go over to their home and don't nobody know these people. You don't even know these people. They had known each other for three days. This was their first date. And now she is dead. He should be terrified. And this is a complete, holy mess. Let's get into it. Welcome to Straddled Events. On this channel, we bring you the truth. Sometimes the truth is quite ugly, unbearable, and you just don't want to deal with it. But on this channel, you're going to get it anyway. Straddling between the fence of good versus evil, right versus wrong. And on this channel, we're going to tell you to do better. Let's go. We have another I-Team report tonight for you. A criminal investigation now has been launched in Bridgeport, Connecticut, after the medical examiner ruled that 23-year-old Lauren Smith Fields died from an accidental drug overdose. Investigative reporter Sarah Wallace says there's a separate investigation into the actions of case detectives. This is exactly what we have been screaming and crying for. Reaction from the attorney representing Lauren Smithfield's family after learning Bridgeport Police narcotics and vice detectives with assistance from the federal DEA will now investigate what led to the death of the 23-year-old fitness buff in her apartment last month. Yesterday, the office of the medical examiner ruled her death an accident, saying she overdosed on a combination of fentanyl, prescription drugs, and alcohol. According to this police report, what we obtained an older man who said he had met Lauren on a dating app called 911, but there is no mention of drugs in the narrative. So fentanyl is the top drug, and then they have a, a couple other drugs they found in her system that are typically associated with date rape drugs. And so we want to know the source of that stuff. We don't know how they spoke to the man, if they questioned him. We don't know anything. As far as we know, they gave him a pat on the back. In an exclusive sit-down interview with us last week, the family accused detectives of mishandling the investigation from the beginning, failing to collect evidence, and refusing to provide any information on the status of the probe. They thought they was going to just throw her away like she was garbage. Yeah. Like she wasn't important, like she didn't have family members that loved her. With mounting pressure on the police department, the mayor yesterday issued a public statement confirming an internal affairs investigation that we first reported, saying there is no tolerance for anything less than respect and sensitivity for family members and their loss. We're going through this over and over again and just we're grieving. We got to fight and grieve and be our own prosecutor, be our own investigator. This morning, the family of Lauren Smith Fields is looking for answers. I just could not believe that my little, my baby sister was gone. Somebody who I love, somebody who I protected, somebody who I've been around my whole entire life. Like I literally 
held her when she was born. According to the Bridgeport, Connecticut police report, on December 12th, authorities found a young adult black female lying on her back that did not appear to be breathing. A man who says he met Lauren on a dating app called the police. That man, who we are not identifying, says he had only known her for three days and visited her apartment for the first time the night before when he claimed she got sick. The morning of December 12th, that man noticed Smithfield's nose was bleeding and she was not breathing. That's when he called 911. The family says the man is the last known person to see Lorne alive. Police say he's not a suspect or a person of interest and that they do not suspect foul play. We want all the people of Bridgeport to be treated fairly and equally under the law. That didn't happen here. And everyone listening to this story needs to know that Lauren Smith feels wasn't given the treatment that she should have been given. Now, Smithfield's family have taken the initial steps to sue the city of Bridgeport and the police department. They allege that the Bridgeport Police Department failed to implement the proper crime scene investigation team to collect physical evidence and that the city has failed to intervene. Today, on what would have been Lauren's 24th birthday, the family has planned a march and a celebration of life. We're gonna march, we're gonna chant her name, we're gonna wish her happy birthday, we're gonna let balloons go. They also have a powerful message that they want to share with the world. Cause we don't want this, that it's not just about Lauren. It's about every girl that could potentially go through something like this. We don't ever want this to happen to anybody. I don't want nobody to feel this pain. The family says that they believe that race has played a role in the investigation, but the police department says the investigation is ongoing and that they're awaiting a cause of death and toxicology report. Here we are in the year of 2022, and there is still no respect and little regard when it comes to women of color, black women in particular. Some of you, police officers, detectives, lieutenants, whatever your title is, you need to quit your damn job because you don't do a good job in your job. You need to find another field to work in where you won't have disrespect when it comes to a human being's life. You didn't give a damn about this woman whatsoever. You didn't bother to collect no evidence. You didn't bother to get the pill that was there, the condom that was full of semen, allegedly. You didn't bother to do any of these things. You police officers and detectives, y'all need to do a better job because y'all are failing at a job that you chose for your own damn career. Do better next time, damn. Y'all women of today are being very careless when it comes to your life. It is not a good idea to just go out with a man that you meet over the internet and no one in your family has met this person. Preferably a male to take a look at that man to see if that dude is okay or not. Men can tell you automatically by looking at another man if that dude is no good or not. Y'all need to do better with y'all shit also. And about this $40, so why are you asking for $40 on the first date and some tequila? You're way more valuable than that. Do better next time. This is the Bridgeport Police Report that was taken on the incident date of 12-12-2021. This is in respect to Lauren Smith-Fields black female date of birth 123-1998 it lists her cell phone number and her address at 33 Clement Street Bridgeport Connecticut and the other person is LaFontaine Matthew so white male they got rid of his date of birth but we know now he's 37 years old and then there's Hector Torres. This was the neighbor upstairs at 31 Clement Street. Uh, she had 1,345 US dollars, three $100 bills, 50 20s, four 10s, 
and one $5 bill, a MasterCard, a key, a passport, and a cell phone. And this is what the report is saying. Reporting officer was dispatched to 33 Plymouth Street on a report of a non-responsive female. Medics and fire were dispatched as well. Upon arrival, a knock on the door was answered by a frantic man later identified as Matthew. He directed me to the rear of the apartment to a bedroom. There I observed a young adult black female laying on her back on the floor. She had dried blood in and around her right nostril. She did not appear to be breathing. He told me that the person on the phone, in parentheses EOS, call taker instructed him to do chest compressions. He picked up his phone and asked if he should keep doing them. He was trembling and visibly shaken. The call taker told him to hang up and speak with me. I told him the medics were on the way and the sirens could be heard in the distance. I asked what her name was and he replied Lauren. When asked for her last name he said he wasn't sure but her Instagram page says it is Smith. He stated that he has only known her for three days and came here for the first time last night. They met on the dating site Bumble. Fire and medics arrived on the scene and began life-saving efforts for Lauren. When asked, Matthew stated that after meeting on Bumble, he found out that they had a mutual friend via Instagram and they had began to chat there. She invited him over for a date asking him for $40 to get her nails done and to bring a bottle of tequila. So he carried her to her bedroom and laid her in her bed. He then laid down next to her and fell asleep. He woke up at approximately 0300 hours to use the bathroom and Lauren was snoring. He woke up again at approximately 0630 hours and she was laying on her right side. Blood was coming out of her right nostril onto the bed and she was not breathing. That is when he called 911. AMR medic number 3038 truck 715 pronounced her dead at 0649 hours. He told me that she has been dead at least an hour or more. Matthew gave a written field statement as to his account of the events of the evening. I notified Sergeant DeBarros and requested Detective Bureau Supervisor be notified via dispatch. Sergeant DeBarros arrived shortly thereafter. I contacted State Medical Examiner Jacqueline Messero at 0704 hours and they list the case number. I found a U.S. passport identifying Lauren as Miss Lauren Smith Fields, male with the same name, a MasterCard with that name, and $1,345 in cash. There was a cell phone on the couch that Matthew identified as Miss Smith's Fields phone. There was also some mail to Miss Stephanie Green and Mr. Brian Green. Detective Sergeant Morales and Detective Cronin arrived on scene at 0812 hours. The medical examiner arrived on the scene shortly thereafter. I made contact with Mr. Hector Torres. He is the landlord and lives on the second floor. He said, I'm assuming that Miss Smith Fields has lived there for almost a year. He knows that her mother stops by occasionally, but he does not know her and has no contact information for her. He was issued a complaint service form and asked to give it to Miss Smithfield's mother the next time he sees her. Detective Cronin gave Mr. Torres his contact information before he and Detective Sergeant Morales left the scene. The medical examiner informed me that a trade service would be coming 
to retrieve the body before she left the scene. Mr. Joel Randolph of Nutmeg Trade Service arrived on scene at 09.33 hours. He completed State of Connecticut Officer of the Chief Medical Examiner Removal Authorization Form and left a white copy with me. After the body was removed, I located a key that fit the front door lock. I made sure all windows and doors were secure and all lights were off and locked both locks on the front door when I left. Ms. Smith filled money, key, passport, MasterCard, and cell phone were all turned into the property room for safekeeping and further investigation. The written field statement and the removal authorization form were turned in to the record room and copies of these forms are attached to this report. And this was taken by Officer Carla R. Remelli and the supervisor was Sergeant Joquim DeBarros. Okay, so there is nothing in this report about them doing any type of uh, DNA from Matthew LaFountain. Uh, there is no evidence of no pills that was in the room. They didn't do uh, no type of evidence retrieval of a used condom that had semen in it according to her brother so they just did a shitty job with this investigation and that concludes this police report from the bridgeport police officers which i'll sorry ask Developing tonight, two detectives suspended for their handling of the investigation into the death of Lauren Smith Fields. She's the college student from Bridgeport, Connecticut, who died after going on a date with someone she met on a dating app. For weeks, her family has questioned how the department has handled her investigation. And tonight, the mayor is blasting the probe and putting two officers on leave. And there are new questions about another woman who died under similar circumstances. News 4's Anjali Hemphill is in the newsroom with the major new developments tonight. Anjali? Gilma, tonight the Bridgeport mayor made a public apology to the two victims' families and said both cases have now been reassigned to other members of the police department. And I want you to know that I am extremely disappointed with the leadership of the Bridgeport Police Department and have found the actions taken up to this point with regards to these two investigations unacceptable. Scathing remarks Sunday night from Bridgeport Mayor Joe Gannam regarding his police department's handling of two women's mysterious deaths on the same day in the same neighborhood. After viewing these matters even more closely, in the absence of the police chief, I've directed the deputy chief, Chief Moraha, to immediately put on administrative leave the two officers who are the subject of the Bridgeport Police Internal Affairs investigation. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Last month, 23-year-old Lauren Smith Fields was found dead in her apartment after a date with a man she had met on the dating app Bumble. Investigators say she had fentanyl, prescription drugs, and alcohol in her system that resulted in what the medical examiner ruled was an accidental overdose. So fentanyl is a top drug, and then they have a, a couple other drugs they found in her system that are typically associated with date rape drugs. It was careless, it was no concern, there was no like care for the family about how we felt, our grief, our pain, none of that. News 4 spoke exclusively to her family last week, who say the Bridgeport police have not properly investigated her death or taken the case seriously. Meanwhile, the family of another woman, 53-year-old Brenda Rawls, have made similar allegations against the department. And she has family that loves her, and we're going to miss her, and we'll never forget her. We're always going to have this pain in our heart for her. Rawls was also found dead in Bridgeport, and like Smithfield's family, they say police never even notified them of her death.
both these deaths happened not only in the 138 district, but the exact same precinct on the same day. So we have a lot of commonality here. And for me, this is becoming frightening. And as questions continue to swirl about the police department's handling of both cases. These families say they will continue to demand answers. You're not going to be satisfied with an internal affairs investigation. No, I want an outside investigation. We want the Department of Justice to come in and do their own investigation. And also tonight, the Smithfields family attorney called the mayor's statement and actions a step in the right direction. Live in the newsroom, Anjali Hemphill, News 4, New York. Okay, also, nur um das mal ganz kurz zusammenzufassen. Wir sprechen...